My 2008 Ford Escape has over 125,000 miles on it, and many of the front suspension parts were long overdue for replacement. There was noticeable rattling going over bumps, the bushings for all components were cracking and leaking grease, and the hub bearing was failing with a constant hum. I opted to replace much of what is seen, but use your own discretion if you plan to attempt a similar repair. Suspension repairs should occur on both sides of the vehicle, but can be isolated to just the front or the rear. To start, we'll want to gain access to the axle nut by removing the plastic cover with a flathead screwdriver. Be careful not to scratch the tire rim. Loosen, but do not remove the axle nut using a breaker bar and a 32 millimeter socket. Take the time to also loosen the lug nuts with a 19 millimeter socket. Follow the vehicle manual when raising the vehicle using a floor jack and stands. In this instance, use wheel chocks for the rear wheels. Note the floor jack is not to lift the vehicle where it is placed. This is just here for additional safety. The jack stands belong on the frame behind the control arms in the front. Take the lug nuts off and remove the tire from the vehicle. Anytime a bolt, nut, or clip was removed in the video, assume I used copious amounts of penetrating fluid to break the rust free. I would recommend pre-treating everything 24 hours in advance. Slowly turn your bolts and work them in a tightening and loosening motion when they are particularly seized. Use a pair of pliers to remove the clip holding the brake line in place. At the metal sleeve, slowly rock the line until the rust breaks free and then push the line downward and out of the retainer. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolt securing the ABS sensor line to the strut assembly. The ABS line can be lowered and left hanging. Use a pair of channel lock pliers to squeeze the retaining hardware upward and then outward on the outside brake caliper. Remove the dust covers from the caliper pin boots. Use a 9 millimeter male bit to remove the caliper pins from the top and bottom assembly. The pins will need to be clean and re-lubricated with silicone based grease. From the outside brake pad, between the pad and the caliper, not the pad and the rotor, pry to remove compression. Lift the caliper off of the rotor, being careful not to pull or twist the brake line. Using a brake pad spreading tool, press the caliper piston until you feel resistance. Pull the inner brake pad from the piston and discard. Carefully hang the caliper out of the way using a cord, wire, or strap. We can hang it from the McPherson strut springs. Ensure there is no weight placed on the brake line to avoid damage. Remove the outer brake pad. Loosen and remove the 18 millimeter caliper mounting bracket bolts. As needed, tap the rotor at the center near the hub to break any rust bond that may be present and remove the rotor. Remove this ABS line clip here, which is held in place with an eight millimeter bolt. Save this, we'll need it and you'll see why next. This eight millimeter bolt holding the ABS sensor in place was rust welded in place and was so corroded that no size socket would grip it. I almost destroyed it trying to remove it from the knuckle. I slotted the bolt using a hacksaw so I could use channel locks and a flathead screwdriver to free it from the knuckle. I had to chisel the plastic off the sensor, pry the sensor out, and then hacksaw the brass fitting minding the threads of the bolt so I could get enough lubricating fluid on both sides of the bolt to break the bond. Needless to say, you may want to plan ahead and buy new ABS sensors. They were less than $20 a piece at the time of this video. That was the strategy I used. The now marred bolt was reused higher up on the retaining bracket. Moving to the engine compartment just above the wheel well, Depress the clip which connects the lower ABS line and separate the connection. Push inward on the clip holding the ABS sensor fitting in place and lower it into the wheel well. Back at the wheel well, remove the ABS line from the clip holding it in place and then pull the clip out using pliers. 
Since we are replacing the entire tie rod, we will want to measure the center of our tie rod end bolt to the frame of the vehicle and mine this measurement when reinstalling to keep our alignment as close as we can before we can get it professionally realigned. Loosen the nut on the inner tie rod holding the outer tie rod end in place. On the opposite side of the vehicle, I couldn't free this and needed to use a hacksaw to remove. Loosen and remove the 18mm nut holding the tie rod end to the knuckle. To prevent damage to the axle threads, use a hammer or a small sledge with the axle nut flush with the end of the axle and lightly tap until the rust bond between the axle and the knuckle is broken. This will allow us to remove the axle from the hub assembly. Use an 18mm socket on both sides of the strut to knuckle bolts and loosen and remove these. Lower the knuckle from the strut. Use a dull ended punch or a large Phillips screwdriver and hammer the axle out of the knuckle. Please, hang the axle out of your way, unlike me who didn't until later in the video. We want to avoid damage to the CV boot and the axle threads. Take the opportunity to loosen and remove the top stabilizer bar link from the strut using a 15mm socket. The old link shown is of higher build quality and has an inner piece for a wrench to stop the screw threads from spinning. If you have the opportunity, purchase a link just like this to save yourself headaches in the future. Using a hammer, Tap the tie rod end out of the knuckle and be sure to hold on to the knuckle. If all your replacement parts are sized exactly the same, you can count how many turns it took to remove the tie rod end from the inner tie rod to best protect alignment state. In my case, my parts were differently sized, so I had to use the measurement method I showed previously. Using a 15mm crescent wrench to prevent the inner tie rod from spinning, and an adjustable crescent wrench, remove the nut on the inner tie rod. Use a pair of needle nose pliers to squeeze the clip holding the rubber boot for the inner tie rod. This will open it and allow it to be removed. Carefully, use a flathead screwdriver or claw tool to remove these clips securing the heat shield near the boot. Tuck the heat shield into the engine bay to give ourselves visibility of the clip holding the inner portion of the rubber boot for the tie rod. Near the front of the lower control arm, looking from under the vehicle, we can see the compression clip holding the inner tie rod boot in place. Using a hook tool, pull this clip outward to loosen and separate it. Slide the clip over the boot and the tie rod to remove it. At the mounting point of the boot, carefully and slowly twist and pull on the boot to remove it. Be careful not to damage the boot. Continuing to twist and pull, slide the boot down the tie rod to remove it. Inspect the boot for damage and cracks. This one is fine, so we'll reuse it. Using a universal inner tie rod removal tool, slide it down the tie rod end and over the silver portion of the inner tie rod receiver as shown here. Secure the tool to the tie rod using a socket wrench. Mine required a 14 millimeter socket. Using a breaker bar and a six inch 3 8 extension, turn the tool to the left to free the tie rod from the assembly. Hand loosen and remove the old tie rod. Reclaim your tie rod tool. Here is a view of the old tie rod on the left and the new tie rod on the right. The new tie rod has been pre-treated with thread locker and as you can see it is shorter than the old tie rod. We're not quite ready to reinstall the new tie rod since we have more parts to remove and install. We'll be replacing the stabilizer bar bushing which is held in place with a mounting bracket that has two bolts to the front and to the rear that are 15 millimeters in size. Lift the stabilizer bar, turn the bushing so the opening is facing downward, and push the bushing up to remove. 
use some lubricating fluid to help with this task as needed. Wipe down and remove any rust that might be present where the bushing rested. Here is a view of the old bushing to the right and the new bushing to the left. This notch is the top of the bushing and is where the mounting bracket rests. This wider opening will face the front of the vehicle and will need lubricated to install. You may place light silicon based lubricant in the inside and the face of the bushing. Do not place lubricant on the outside of the bushing. Clean and remove rust and debris from the stabilizer bar mounting bracket using a wire brush if the part is reusable. Now that we have play in the stabilizer bar, and since our lower control arm is still present, loosen and remove the stabilizer link from the stabilizer bar. Reinstall the stabilizer bushing as shown and center it to the final position of the mounting bracket. Since we will need some play in the stabilizer bar to ease installation of the lower control arm, please do not secure it in place yet. To begin the replacement of the lower control arm, Loosen the pinch bolt securing the lower control arm with the knuckle using a 15 millimeter socket in a likewise sized wrench. Since we are not concerned with damaging the bushing of the lower control arm, use a set of forks to pry the knuckle off of the lower control arm. I'd recommend securing the top of the knuckle back to the strut to avoid the knuckle falling off the control arm and destroying your toes. Once the knuckle has been fully removed from the control arm bushing, you can remove the bolt in the strut holding the knuckle and pull the knuckle. This is the point where I figured out that I should hold the axle out of the way. To remove the lower control arm, we'll use a breaker bar and a 15 millimeter socket on the frontmost bolt. To fully remove the bolt, Pull the plastic underbody cover towards you. Now for the removal of the rear bolt for the lower control arm. This requires a 21 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. This bolt is a nightmare. You'll want to spray penetrating fluid at the top here. You may need to tap this bolt and slightly tighten it before it will begin to loosen as this was my experience. Pull the bolt and then you can pull the control arm straight out. Here is a close-up of the receiver for the rear bolt on the control arm. Notice the screw threads are at the top and this is where your penetrating fluid needs to go. Now is a good time to clean up our workspace. Install the new control arm in a similar manner that the old one was removed. Starting with the front bolt, apply some blue medium strength thread locker to the bolt and thread it into place. Apply thread locker to the rear bolt and thread it into place, lifting on the control arm as needed to prevent binding. Use a torque wrench and secure the front control arm bolt to 85 foot pounds. With your torque wrench still in hand, secure the rear control arm bolt to 129 foot pounds. Moving back to the tie rod, hand thread it into the receiver. Righty tighty. Place the universal tie rod tool over the tie rod and secure it. During the tightening process, you'll likely need to loosen and reposition the tie rod tool for mechanical advantage and to ensure that you have space to loosen the nuts on the tool. Tighten the inner tie rod to 85 foot pounds with a torque wrench. Slide the inner tie rod end nut off and install the rubber boot to the pre-marked seating lines on the tie rod. Slide the boot over the receiver of the inner tie rod as shown here. Using a pair of crimps, install a new clamp and ensure it is firmly seated between the grooves here and resists twisting. Slide the clamp of the boot back into place for the outside of the tie rod boot. Here is a close up. Now we'll reinstall the stabilizer bushing bracket. Hand tighten the 15 millimeter screws first at the front and the rear of the bracket. Tighten these to 52 foot pounds using a torque wrench.
Thread the inner tie rod nut back into place. Install the new tie rod end and continuously measure it in relation to the frame using the value that was gathered previously. Tighten the inner tie rod nut against the outer tie rod end to 30 foot pounds. Reinstall the heat shield we moved earlier. Now we'll install the new stabilizer link bar starting at the bottom. I don't recommend the type of stabilizer links I have shown. The bushings are not greasable and they use a hex key to hold the threads in place when tightening. This will be my misery later. Please avoid the one shown. I'll tighten this to 32 foot pounds and say a little prayer for future me. To install the ABS sensor line, push the connector and the fitting into the wheel well until you hear it click into place. Move to the engine bay and push the two connectors together to lock them into place. Move back to the wheel well. Pass the ABS line behind the strut. Place the top hook of the mounting bracket into the hole here and use that ridiculous 8mm bolt that we nearly destroyed at the sensor. That is, unless you have hindsight and bought a new one to use. We will move from here to the lower control arm bushing and take note of the groove that is meant for the pinch bolt to secure the knuckle in place. Carefully install the new knuckle and hub assembly on the control arm as shown. Take note that if the knuckle is not pushed down far enough, the groove of the knuckle will not match the same groove from the control arm and the pinch bolt will not pass through. Put the pinch bolt in place with the threads facing the front of the vehicle and use two 15mm sockets and a torque wrench to tighten this to 52 foot pounds. Notice the splines in the hub assembly as I turn it. We will need to carefully turn the hub and match the splines to the axle while pushing the knuckle upwards. After throwing a bolt into the knuckle at the strut to hold it into place, Move the tie rod end into the knuckle. Double check the measurement for alignment purposes. Apply thread locker and then install the castle nut on the tie rod end. Tighten the castle nut to 41 foot pounds. Take note of the hole in the tie rod end threads. We need to pass a cotter pin through here and spread the cotter pin. We will now replace the strut and move our brake caliper to another position that does not place tension on the brake line. On other vehicles, you need to mark the location of the nuts for alignment reasons, but after unscrewing, I found there is little play here so it's really not necessary. Loosen three of the four nuts holding the strut. Take one hand and hold the strut in place to prevent it from falling while removing the last nut. Carefully lower and remove the strut from the wheel well. Here is a view of the old and new strut assembly. Looking up into the wheel well, we will need to remove the grime so that it looks something similar to this. Pay attention to the top of your strut, which, if you look here, there is an indication of how the strut needs to be oriented when installed. Out should be facing your body when standing to the side of the vehicle. Install the new strut assembly into the wheel well, affixing at least one nut to hold it into place. Apply thread locker to all four threads and torque to 35 foot pounds. Back down at the knuckle, we will reinstall both bolts into the strut with thread locker and torque them, both, to 85 foot-pounds. Swing the stabilizer bar link into the strut and tighten this to 32 foot-pounds in the same manner as the lower link. 
We will need to install the ABS sensor next. Make sure that the cable comes over the top of the knuckle. Place thread locker on the unmangled 8mm bolt that we recovered from above, then place the sensor into the hole on the knuckle. Install the 8mm bolt and tighten this down. 26 foot-pounds appeared sufficient here. I couldn't find an approximate measurement anywhere. Install the mounting bracket on the strut for the ABS line and tighten this down with a 10 millimeter socket. Apply anti-seize to the face of the hub assembly, making sure not to get any on the threads where the tire's lug nuts will be. We're installing a new rotor here, so be sure to wipe down both sides of the rotor to remove the cosmoline if you're doing the same. Place the rotor over the studs of the hub assembly. Place the brake caliper mounting bracket over the rotor and throw in the 18mm bolts to secure it into place. These must be torqued to 110 foot-pounds. We'll be removing the brake caliper boots and installing new ones. The gasket for the piston is still okay for now. Clean the area where the boots sat. Install and then lubricate the caliper pin boots with silicon-based brake grease and be sure to avoid the area where the dust covers will sit. Grease the face of the caliper piston, avoiding the rubber boot. Grease the inside ears of the caliper where the outside brake pad will sit. Grease the face of the caliper mounting bracket as shown. This is where the pads will rest. Hit both bottom and top. Press the floating brake pad into place with the clip sitting inside the caliper piston. Throw the outer pad into place on the caliper mounting bracket. Set the caliper into place on the mounting bracket. Make absolutely sure the brake hose is not twisted. Lubricate the clean caliper pins with silicon-based brake grease and hand tighten them into the rear of the caliper. Torque the pins to 26 foot-pounds. Install the caliper boot dust covers. Use a pair of channel locks to squeeze the retaining hardware back into place. Make sure that the hooks on the back of this bracket are seated as shown. Slide the brake hose into the bracket shown here, and then reinstall the retaining clip. I am using high temperature red grease to fill the lower control arm ball joint. Once it gets puffed up as shown, stop filling. Reinstall the tire and partially tighten the lug nuts until you meet resistance. Lower the vehicle slightly so the wheel begins to touch the ground and then reinstall the axle nut if not already done. Torque this nut to 220 foot-pounds. Torque the lug nuts in a star pattern to 100 foot-pounds per lug. Start the vehicle and pump the brake several times while still in park until the pedal becomes stiff. Initially, there will be significant travel in the pedal. Again, please do this prior to shifting the vehicle into drive. Last but not least, please reinstall the axle nut cover on the wheel rim. Now is the time to get the vehicle professionally realigned. It's important to also mention that because I replaced the ABS sensors and the vehicle was not run for several days, I needed to clear some false positive diagnostic codes using my Blue Driver ODB2 reader, but only do this if you know what you're doing. Having a reader on hand could at least let you know what might be wrong should a dash light appear. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to receive notification of future content.